Hey guys, we're in our living room and I just wanted to spend the day with you and do some plant chores and a little bit of rearranging in our living room. So one of the updates we had wanted to do for a while was moving the plants from the back part of the house. You know, I had them set up in the plant room back there and we wanted to transfer them in here and integrate them more into our everyday living space because we were hardly ever spending very much time back there. And I had all of those lush, beautiful plants back there and I hardly got to see them because I'm normally working out here. And Michael really enjoyed the plants too. He wanted to get like a, a reading chair and sit with the plants back there, but it was getting too hot back there for him to even be able to be there. So we decided, okay, let's integrate all the plants out here and they'll be in our everyday living space and we'll get to see them all the time. And also last year I did downsize my collection a little bit. I mean, I still have plants. <laughs> Don't get me, I got plenty of plants, but I wanted to kind of change up uh, this, you know, certain genuses, certain species that I was growing and just kind of, you know, narrow it down to just having my favorites because you know plants take they take time energy resources <laughs> to be able to grow them and we want to grow our favorites the ones that make us feel excited to be in the hobby you know and it's it's a joy to look at them every day so there were certain ones where I was kind of like mm, yeah I could live without that <laughs> I, I could live without that plan so we're gonna be switching some things up I'm gonna style the living room a little. You know, I've got a couple of little updates that I'm able to incorporate in here, so let's get started. Right above me, I have the Soltec Solutions small grow light. This is the Aspect grow light in the small size. And we normally will have that on, so I am gonna have plants over here in this, in this corner. Okay, hang on. I just realized I gotta scoot this shelf out so I can get back here to sweep. Before doing the living room updates, I just wanna have like a nice clean blank canvas to work with. So I just wanna get everything clean first. And I got this shelf at an estate sale. It was $66. Actually, a lot of our furniture has been secondhand, and I, I love that actually, because you can save so much money that way. And uh, it, you get beautiful pieces that are really unique, you know, like you don't, you may not see them nowadays, or they may be like super expensive nowadays, because you know, the prices of everything have gone up so much. So it's nice to find good deals of beautiful pieces that you don't see very often. And this vase I always have up here. I found this at Home Goods. It's made in Portugal. I love it. <laughs> I love the shape of it. I love these smooth lines and it looks good when the light's coming down because it creates these awesome shadows. And just in case you're seeing this for the first time and you haven't seen my other videos on it, this is a rebounder. It's the Bellicon rebounder. I love this best piece of home workout equipment. I say that every time because it is. It is our favorite piece of home workout equipment that we've ever owned. I would like to leave the rebounder out all the time. So we always want it to be set up and ready to jump on. Um, but what we're gonna do is move it to this side of the living room. So I'm just gonna scoot this over here. And I'll move the floor puff over here just to move it out of the way for a minute. I'm gonna pull out the coffee table and have that right here facing that direction. So let me scoot this. It's gonna have to be kind of in the center. So one of the things Michael had wanted to do in the plant room was have a reading chair in there. All right, let's scoot this in here and I'm gonna actually bring this all the way down to this end. And although it doesn't have arms, like we pictured something with armrest before for a reading chair, but actually it turns out that they're super comfortable and I don't even notice not having the arms. And I actually kind of like the look, the, the sleekness, <laughs> the modern look of having an armless chair. So it'll be fun to try these out. And uh, yeah, they'll, they'll, at least they'll serve as a great placeholder if we find something that we'd love even more down the road. Do we want to try angled? Like it would be just slightly angled. What, what do we think? And the coffee table, it's a split reed bamboo coffee table. Sometimes I get questions still, like if I post it on Instagram or something, um, what, like where is it from, what is it? It's split reed bamboo and it's uh, Gabriella Crespi is the designer. And I found it on Craigslist, secondhand. Uh, it actually came with a little side table or like an accent table. I'm gonna bring that out too, because I was using that in the back room, but I wanna have it out here now that we got a little spot here with the chairs. And these are a matching set. So when I got this one on Craigslist, it came with this one. And the total price for both of these was $75 because I love saving money wherever possible, but I like design. I like well-designed pieces. 
you know, luxury for less, basically. I'm just gonna leave it pulled out from the wall a little bit because I don't wanna block the outlet because I wanna be able to use that. Especially if I'm able to find a floor lamp. I really wanna find a nice floor lamp. I don't have that yet, but I'm looking. <laughs> and I'm very curious. Let me know what your guys' favorite places to get furniture, whether it's Ikea or anywhere. I just love, I love furniture. <laughs> I, I'm always like rearranging and stuff as, as a lot of you guys probably know. It feels good to refresh a space. And I, I love change too. It kind of like re-energizes the space, you know? And since there was a set of these chairs, matching chairs, we wanted to get both of them. These are my current books I've been reading. Palms, and this is Enid's book, who has the rare plant nursery in Florida. So I, I love her, her plants. <laughs> she has amazing specimens. And so anyway, that, I got that book on Amazon. She released that in 2022, I think. It's a great book. And the palm book, I've been uh, reading a lot because I'm researching a lot of different types of palms. And the woven floor puff, I'm going to slide part way under here. Actually, I, I kind of love the look of the armless chairs just because it's so minimalistic and simple and they were in good condition too. So at the state sale, they were charging or they were selling them separately, but it was actually, they had a sale going on. So it was half price of certain colored tags that day. And these just happened to be half price. <laughs> so they ended up being only $33 each. So total for the set, $66 for the two chairs. I found this Troy Cactus Skeleton actually at uh, the Miners Co-op. It's a little outdoor gym show when the gym shows are going on during winter. And I found this piece and this goes right back here next to our shelf. And I just kind of lean it right here against my shelf. So going for that kind of modern organic look, like I like rustic, but I want the modern elements at the same time, you know, so like the shapes, modern shapes but using a lot of natural textures to get that organic feel. This is our Friendly Fossil, one of them. I actually need to get the other ones on the website, but this one is one that I just decided to keep as a specimen for us because I love these. I love fern fossils. I love palm leaf fossils or palm frond fossils. I think they're gorgeous. So this is just about 300 million years old. I'll try it here, and then if I have plants that end up needing the space under the grow light, then I can always move it out. This shelf is best for little plants, unless I took out one of the glass shelves, which I could totally do in the future if I have plants, more plants that need to grow under the grow light here, and if they get a little taller. So I could always like take out like a middle shelf or like the bottom shelf or something. If you guys saw our gym show vlog on the strangest sand on earth, <laughs> this is what those are. It's a sand concretion from France and it is so bizarre, isn't it? Like the shape of it. Michael's actually had this one for years. He bought it in Maui from another dealer, another uh, mineral, rock and mineral dealer. I mean, these are very sculptural pieces. It's just crazy, isn't it? I, I love weird stuff like this, and it does have that very modern vibe to it, you know, very modern shape, even though the thing is ancient, right? I'll put you right there. Look at that sweet baby. It's a little Monstera Deliciosa baby. And it's the, um, the variety Torii. I have not heard anyone speak of this plant. I know nothing about it other than it's a variety of Monstera deliciosa and it's apparently more of a dwarf variety. So it's supposed to be smaller. That's all I know about this plant. I just saw it at Lowe's. I read the tag and I was like, oh, I love Monstera deliciosa. Let me try a, a small variety of it and see what happens. So I, I don't know how it's going to be. It is putting out a brand new leaf right there. I need to repot this plant. It has roots coming through the bottom and I can feel the roots pushing against the side of the pot. I did find these pots actually at Walmart. They were around seven, eight dollars and they do have a drainage hole so you could pot directly in there but I just wanted to use them as decorative planters. For now, I'll just set it on, on the top shelf even though I'm gonna repot it soon anyway as soon as I find a pot for it. But yeah, for now, I'll just set it up there. This is Anthurium pendulifolium. I'm gonna put this on the second shelf, I think for now, and just test out the lighting, see if it's happy there. And that's usually what I do with my plants is just try places and see what kind of response I get. If they like it and they're growing good and they start thriving, then I leave them there. And if they don't seem to like it, then I keep kind of, you know, trying different areas around the house and seeing what type of lighting they, they prefer. 
I do need to repot this also eventually because it has roots coming through the bottom and climbing out the top. <laughs> so this one is gonna get a repot pretty soon. I'm thinking of switching up its pot also because right now it's in this very porous clay pot, but I wanna try putting it into like more of a aeroid plastic pot with you know extra ventilation and then into a decorative uh, decorative pot and just see how it likes that with a little more moisture holding in there. So I'll just experiment with it. But yeah, I'd like to get it some more moisture, I think. I'll get repotting a couple of plants that we're gonna be moving over here into brand new planters, which I love these planters and you guys haven't seen them yet. So this was the pot that we got for the Rapa's Excelsa and I got this at Lowe's and that's what I showed you guys yesterday in yesterday, well in the last video, but that was just yesterday. And so I got this thinking I was going to drill it out and pot the palm directly into it and just have a saucer underneath. But then Michael was like, well, is there any way you can not have a saucer underneath? And I was like, yeah, we can, we can do that. We could just get another pot and insert it inside here and use this as a decorative pot. So that's what we're gonna try today. And if you're looking for a pot for a specific plant, and then you also have the dimensions of a certain size, like your margin for what you need to find is very specific. And <laughs> I looked all over the place for the right insert pot that could fit this plant and be able to fit this pot. And so this is the closest thing that I could find after looking all over. It does fit in here as, as close as I can get. You can see the rim of it, that's fine. All right, let's see how this goes. We'll see what the roots are doing. I wonder how easy this is gonna come out. It's got, I think it's got some big chunky roots. Oh, oh, there we go. It's got some shoots that I've gotta be careful of also. Oh. There's definitely some very chunky roots in there. Okay, let's see how this feels about getting into this pot. Okay, so it looks like this pot will give it about two inches all the way around. So I think, I think that's fine. I mean, I'll probably end up having to repot it again in the spring, but at least it'll buy it some time and uh, buy me some time to, to uh, figure out a future pot situation for it by that time. So since it seems to be very happy, I'm not gonna really touch anything. I'm just gonna pot it up exactly as is. And it looks like the soil came from Florida. That doesn't look like Hawaii. Yeah, at least it'll have a little bit more room and we'll see what kind of growth we can get on top before I go repotting it again. It's got some new little palm pups coming up. Those are so cute when they're babies. Oh my God, I love this palm. This is one of my favorite indoor palms. They're so beautiful, especially as they get a little bigger. I'm just gonna top dress it with some coconut husk chunks. The coconut husk chunks look so much nicer than just looking at the soil. So I like to use it as top dressing, especially for palms. Coconut husk looks really good as the top dressing. Some of the updates that I haven't got to share with you guys are like taking care of palms. So I do use a palm specific fertilizer. I'm not actually gonna fertilize this palm today though, since I just repotted it. I just wanna let it settle into its new pot and I don't wanna add anything to it to you know stress it out in any kind of way. But when I do fertilize my palms, this is what I use. It's the Palm Food by Carl Pool. So it's specifically designed for palms. It's a 12-4-12 and it seems to be working pretty well so far. Uh, I haven't tested out a lot of different palm foods. So if you have one that you really like, let me know in the comments below because I'm always interested in learning what you guys are using too. So I always use a filtered water just because palms can be sensitive to salts salt buildups and it can affect the leaf tip. They can end up with browning leaf tips. Okay, it's just about done draining and then I'll go slip it back into its pot and I'll find a place in the living room for it. So one of the things I've been thinking of for a while is actually moving my ponytail, wait, I'm sorry, you are not a ponytail palm. <laughs> I'm always trying to call this thing a ponytail palm. It is a pygmy date palm otherwise known as a Phoenix Robolini. So our pygmy date palm that I've been growing inside since we got it, I think that I wanna turn it into a patio plant because I'd like to have a nice plant outside. I just wanna see what this space would look like without this plant being in here. First, let me see how difficult this would be to move. I got my little wheelie thing here. All right, here we go. Oh, that wasn't so bad. Now it can roll around. I can wheel this over here. I think that's gonna be perfect for it. It looks beautiful. I have the perfect spot for it right under our shaded patio. So it's not gonna be getting direct sunlight. I'll definitely make sure it gets acclimated to being outside. 
um, and keep it in the shade. <laughs> so since it's gonna be coming from inside the house where it's been very shaded, and now that's opened up this whole space here for me to redesign it with a different look. So the Kintia Palm, I'm just gonna repot into a slightly larger nursery pot, and then that's gonna go into another pot that I love these pots. <laughs> Wait until you see them. They are they are so perfect. Okay, there's my screen cover. It's just window screen that I buy in a roll at Lowe's or Home Depot, and I just put that over the drainage holes. I think that's a good recipe for palm soil there. Well, we'll see how it works. <laughs> it'll, it'll be an experiment. Okay, let's see what this Kintia palm is like out of its pot. I, oh, there we go. Okay, I just wanted to see if I can get it to pop, get it to loosen up. Oh, oh, oh. Hold on, hold on, we gotta get a grip here. We got three babies. Loving it, <laughs> loving it. This is a very healthy plant here. No root rot, everything looks super good. Very fresh looking, healthy roots. So the mixture that they have it in that it seems to be very happy in is, it seems to be holding on to a good amount of moisture, but very porous material all throughout also. I can feel all the bits of lava or pumice in there and, and also has perlite in there too. So I think this mix should be perfect for it. So I'm not gonna be disturbing the roots or anything at all. I'm just gonna be transferring it directly into its next pot with as little disturbance as possible. It appears that maybe this Kintia was grown in Hawaii because it's got, it does have lava in there. Okay, I see those big chunks. That soil still seems good, so I'm actually re-harvesting that and putting it back in here. Okay, I think we nailed it with the soil. I think it is a really good match for what it was in. Uh, the only thing is I just didn't have the, the Hawaiian black lava <laughs> to put in it, but that's okay because we had pumice, nice chunky pumice. Time to top dress with some coconut chunks. And I know it's not going to look spectacular in the black nursery pot right now. I used black nursery pot at that. <laughs> but, but wait until you see the pot it's gonna go into. All right, you guys, this is one of the pots. So it comes with a saucer. It's 20 inches high, and I believe it's about 11 inches diameter. As far as function goes, I wanted to show you guys the what the bottom is like here. So if you were planting directly into this planter, see how there's a little platform? That's about an inch to an inch and a half taller than the bottom of the pot. I would supplement with more drainage holes. So I would actually drill holes around the very bottom here. And these would just be like extra. <laughs> Those would be, because that is not enough for the type of plants that I grow anyway. Like aeroids need really good drainage. Palms need good drainage. And I can't have like water pooling up at the very bottom like that. So I would change that as far as the design goes. And if we grab this little saucer, actually this doubles as either use as a saucer if you wanted to pot directly into it and you wanted a saucer on the bottom, or if you are using it as a decorative pot, you just take that and let that fall about halfway down. If you're putting the cinder part in, it's easier to get it straight and even if you use both hands. So I just kind of hold it with both fingers as I slide it down and I just try to adjust it before I let it fall. Let's get this in here and we'll see how it looks. That's a perfect planter for this, I think. What do you guys think? I, I love it. I love the texture. It's the perfect size for, for like a medium sized plant. They're not huge planters because it is in a, like around 11 inch, maybe a little bit more, but you know, it fits like a, a 10 inch pot perfectly, an insert pot. But yeah, I love having that extra height. It lifts it up, gives it a little more height and makes it look a little more substantial, you know, more of a statement plant. And I, I love it. I'm gonna put the Kintia palm on this side of the shelf. Perfect, yes. Oh, look, at, it's got another frond coming in over there too. I didn't even notice that one. I received these planters to try out and review for collaboration with La Jolie Muse. The pots come in different styles and colors on their website and Amazon store. I'll link them below. I got the matte white. I really like the taller height and the clean, modern aesthetic of these plant pots. The first thing I noticed when I was unboxing these plant pots is the texture. They have a beautiful stone-like texture. They're a lighter weight plant pot because it's a resin planter, but it's a thick resin, so they have a solid, more premium quality feel. And a big thank you to La Jolie Muse for this collaboration. I'm always looking for good plant pots, and I was happy to find these. These are exactly what I was hoping they would be. You can find La Jolie Muse plant pots on their website and Amazon store. I'll have both of those linked below. This is the monster that I got at Trader Joe's. 
Oh, it's got a fat root on the bottom, like a super, super chunk. Let me get this out of the pot and we'll see how it's doing. Oh, it's really pushing up against the side of the pot on that side, I guess. Oh, there we go. Did we get, did we get that root out? Oh yes. It is just fat chunk root, like everywhere all around it. Oh my gosh, that, those are some of the biggest, fattest roots I have seen on this small of a monstera. It's actually kind of funny. I had a feeling this was gonna be a good one. It just looked really uh, hearty. It looked very substantial, so it looked like it was healthy and happy and doing well. I kind of tried to loosen them slightly on the bottom, but I don't really wanna peel those apart. I'm just gonna leave it as is. It's got enough roots here, like root ends, that those will grow out and find find the new soil. So last year I downsized my collection also, just because I wanted a smaller collection that was more easier to manage. And it just had all of my favorite plants that I enjoyed growing most. So I just wanted to downsize my collection so it would be more manageable and keep it fun, you know, cause it's a hobby. It's like my favorite hobby, growing plants. But I wanna make sure it stays fun and doesn't get overwhelming. So it just makes it easier to have a smaller collection and acquire plants slowly and intentionally and not get too excited and just wanna like try growing everything <laughs> because it's, it's very tempting to do that. So as for the plants, my collection is alive and well. It's just a little bit smaller <laughs> than it was before. And uh, I'm, I'm going after my wish list plants, plants that I really, really want to try growing. Taking care of plants to me is part of taking care of earth, you know, conserving earth and the beauty, the natural beauty that surround us and appreciating it. Like there's a lot of plants that if they weren't house plants or like sold to us as house plants, would we even ever know that they existed on earth? You know, like I think about things in, in a different way, like wanting to always be learning and having a curiosity about what is out there that I don't know about. Like, what do I need to find? There's, there's treasures out there amongst us and we, we gotta find them. It brings beauty into our life, you know? All right, let me get this cleaned up and I'll be right back. I think in the pictures on Amazon, they show this middle shelf being this side up with the little, uh, the little grid pattern on here to kind of lift the pot up. But since I want my pot to be inset a little lower and due to the height of my pot, I'm gonna flip it this way so it sits a little bit lower in the pot. So it doesn't matter which way you use it. I'm using it more like the saucer style though. And the Monstera I'll put on this side. Having a Monstera Deliciosa back in my house feels right. It feels like it's supposed to be here. I, I just love these. So good to have one back in the house. They're having a book sale at the Friends of the Library. Michael wanted to come out. Did you find some books? I always like to look at the science section. You know what's funny? I already checked the plant section and they only had the same palm book that I already have at home, except I randomly found this palm book in the astronomy section. <laughs> the universe was listening. I was specifically looking for palm books. There's the book on palms I just got yesterday at the Friends of the Library. Friends of the Library is a nonprofit bookstore here, a used bookstore. And so the books are really inexpensive. Like this cost me $3. So that'll be one of our coffee table books. So in our living room here, most of the grow space are, I'm gonna have in these two areas, but it's not done yet. So I have like gaps here, some empty gaps that I'm sort of saving for any wish list plants that come in. Cause I would like to grow some moss pole plants, some climbers. <laughs> That's what I was trying to say. Some climbing plants who are going to be on moss poles. This light worked perfect for the pygmy date palm, but it's not gonna be ideal for the new plants that I'm gonna have under here. So I'm gonna to have to switch that grow light. So I'll either get a second Soltec Solutions small aspect light for right here, or I'll test out a totally different grow light because I love testing grow lights. And I've got like a marathon of repotting to do. <laughs> it's gonna be so much fun though. I love, I actually love repotting plants. I've been slowly switching over some of my plants into clear pots. So then I can just put those clear pots into a decorative pot and then I'll have some weight around it, but then I'll get, I'll get to pluck the plant out and look at its roots. I love looking at roots. I, I love roots. <laughs> I think they're so fascinating. This is a philodendron patriciae that I moved from our home office. I tried it in there. It loves the lighting so much. It, it does really well in there. So I know it can work there, but I kind of wanted to test it out over here. I just love these long pendant leaves. Just looking at it makes me so happy and I'm able to see it 
better from this direction over here compared to when it's um, in the office looking out the window. I don't get to see it. I see the back of it. <laughs> you know how it goes with our plants sometimes. Like they need the light, but we kind of want to see them too. You know how it is. This is definitely going to get a repot. It is so overdue. It's outgrowing its pot and it's pulling on the totem. Like all the weight of the leaves on this one side is just pulling the totem over. It's on a nice strong wood totem, but I keep trying to readjust it and straighten it and it's not working anymore. So I've definitely got to get this repotted as soon as possible. So I already have supplies on, on their way. I ordered them on Amazon, but I'm happy with the leaves that I have going here because this thing is growing in 20% humidity <laughs> and it's it's doing just fine and it's healthy it's happy well I mean are you happy you, pr you probably could be happier if you were had something to climb on huh it's also at the top of the pole here so it has nowhere else to go uh, but don't worry we're gonna get you taken care of very soon <laughs> in a few days here as soon as my supplies come in um, I already have the pots ready to go and I think you'll fit in that pot Anyway, hopefully, hopefully I got the right size. We'll see. But anyway, more projects coming. Just wanted to share that. Oh, and if you have not seen the stand and you're curious, what is that weird stand that you have it on? That's a saguaro skeleton. It's cut flush on top and it does have some of the roots. So it stands up really well and it just happened to make a really good plant stand. So that's what I use it for. Got it in a state sale for $40. And uh, yeah, I love those, I love finding like weird pieces of wood <laughs> to use in my decor. So yesterday when I was filming, cause this is another day, where I'm, same uniform, different color, but this is like my summer uniform, shorts and tank tops every day. It's 107 degrees out there. So I'm sure you'll understand. But this is a candle that came, actually both of these, two candles that came from La Jolie Muse. And this was totally unexpected cause I was just filming and all of a sudden the package arrived. I had no idea that they were coming, but Mm, pumpkin pumpkin chai that would be a really nice fall scent there but anyway i wanted to mention that la jolie muse also makes candles they have also baskets and they're a home store so they have a variety of different items but the plant pots were was our collaboration and that's what i really wanted to check out so if you want to check out their plant pots i will link their amazon store and their website below definitely check them out i also want to find a nice floor lamp so maybe I can find one at an estate sale or maybe online somewhere. I don't know, I'm looking right now. I haven't found the one yet, so I'm kind of holding out for it. It's like a note when you see it, you know? Also on the shelf, I have some empty gaps there, so there's still room for plants. I sort of have some, you know, placeholder items down here, <laughs> like my fossil and stuff. So those can always come out if I do have plants that will grow under the grow light there. So I might experiment with some different grow lights, but I'm pretty sure that when I switch out this light, I'm just gonna get a second one of these. And one tip is if you're ever ordering on Soltech Solutions website, use a discount code. They always have all kinds of discount codes going. All of the people who have worked with them in the, what, like in the past to have discount codes, the codes are good for pretty much forever, I wanna say, or at least like they don't expire. Mine hasn't expired. I still have the same code. It's Aeroid Interiors. I'll have that down below. I always have it down below in the videos anyway. But yeah, it saves you 15% if you're ever ordering on Soltech Solutions website. And then you can save that money and Buy yourself something nice. Buy yourself a nice plant or something instead. Now that I'm done filming, I gotta get the grow light back on. So the plant babies are probably wondering what happened to their light. And I keep this on a timer. Now, if I did have a grow light over here, look how nice the, the pleats and the leaves would look. Like it really brings out the texture of them. I think that would look awesome as soon as I get that light switched out because that one's gonna be too bright for those. Man, I love that plant. I should have grown it on a moss pole though. That's my one regret about it. It's so easy to grow. If you grow it on a moss pole, you'll be able to get some big leaves out of it. It'll help it mature more. Anyway, that, that'll be a different video. <laughs> We're gonna try that, but that'll be a different video. It's a nice spotlight, you know, for the plants. It really just makes them pop. It brings out that texture. Ooh, that delicious texture. I love the direction that it's going. It feels cozier. Now I can sit here and read my books as soon as I have time to do that. Was there anything else I forgot to mention? I'm trying to think if I'm leaving anything out. If you guys have any requests uh, for videos or any questions or anything, feel free to leave them in the comments below and I'll do my best to get back to you or make the video that you wanna see. Um, just let me know. It can be on any topic too. It doesn't have to be on plants or home decor or anything, any, any type of video you wanna see. Cause I'm planning on doing a little bit of an update on my channel too. 
So I'm gonna start making two videos a week instead of, you know, it's been like less lately by accident just because I was working a lot. But now that I have that under control, I can get back to making content more, which is what I like. Um, Cause I love being on here with you guys and love sharing ideas and doing projects with you and all of that. So, all right. Oh, and vlogs, of course, vlogs. <laughs> I wanna do some more vlogs too. All right, thank you guys so much for hanging out. I love you and take really good care of yourselves and I will see you in the next video. Bye.